Imparakasakata Mirako Sopra Rakata Barakata Barakata Rebekata Bekata 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 In Toropa Shekatele Katula Brede Kada Mama Shekatura Rekatele Bekata Luda Brekalu Sekatu Brekalu Sakatu Father will thank you Father will thank you Be thou exalted Be thou exalted Lord Jesus Thank you Father In Jesus name we are giving thanks Shall we pray our Heavenly Father will thank you for today. We exalt the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being God in our lives. We thank you for your grace, for your peace, protection, security. Abba Father will thank you for your mercy. And thank you for this day your made us to see again to glorify Jesus Christ. Lord, I surrender myself. I ask, O oh God, enlighten the eyes of understanding. Use me to minister nothing but your word and bless the viewers of this message. I ask, O oh God, impact them with knowledge, knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. A very good afternoon to everybody watching this video, watching this message. Good afternoon to you or whatever you are watching from. A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Mount Zion Fresh Fire International Ministries. This is a ministry where we glorify the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching our videos. May God continue to bless and sustain you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, this afternoon, I want to share uh, a message which I titled, Communication with God. A message I titled, Communication with God. Quickly, let's open to the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. The book of John, chapter number 4, verses number 24. John 4 24 I read from the NIV version John chapter 4 verse 24 it says God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth God is spirit for his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth i'm teaching on communication with god god is a spirit god is a spirit and his worshipers god's worshipers must worship him must worship him must worship jesus must worship jesus christ in spirit must worship god almighty in spirit must worship Adonai in spirit and in truth because the spirit of truth brings the truth the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth when he comes he shall bring the truth he shall reveal the truth about what the truth about the Word of God the truth about the gospel of Jesus because he's there to attest to testify of Jesus Behold, the Lamb of God. It was the Holy Ghost that revealed it to John. And John attested that this is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Communication with God. We can see that we, 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 we have to understand that worship is a form of communication. Please follow me. I'm teaching this afternoon. Worship is a form of communication which adores the Creator adores God, exalt God, honors God, reverence God. So worship is a form of communication which is done not in the flesh but in the spirit. True worship is done in the spirit for God is spirit. Hallelujah. So a time has come when we need to really and totally depend on the person of the Holy Spirit. Totally and constant and constantly depending on the person of the Holy Ghost in order for it for us to achieve This communication there must be fellowship with the person of the Holy Ghost Because it is in him that will live and move and have our being So he is the one that actually reveals to us who Jesus is so communication with God is by the person of the Holy Ghost and in the spirit Hallelujah so what is communication let me lay first my foundation what is communication 
And remember, if you go to university, there's a department of what? Linguistics. There's a department of mass communication as well. Mass communication. Where they train people to become journalists. They may be journalists, they can be editors, they can be those talking on TV, they can be sports journalists. But mass communication deals with journalism. So, which means that communication is important in our lives and in our society. If a university can have a department of mass communication, which suggests to me that it is very important, communication is very vital, is very important. So communication is simply what? Sending and receiving messages from one person to another. Sending and receiving messages or information or the act of conveying meanings from one person to another. So every communication involves a sender and a receiver. Every com communication involves at least a sender and a receiver. There can be many senders and there can be many receivers. But at least it involves a sender and a receiver. So somebody has to send the information. Somebody has to receive the information. Communication with God. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that. We have to understand that the purpose of communication is to inform to influence, to express. The purpose of communication is to express, to inform, and to influence. Remember, from one person to another, or from a group of people to another. Hallelujah. And there are various methods of communication. It can be by radio, it can be by writing, by emails, by fax. Hallelujah. Sign language, body language, these are different forms of communication. However, communication is vital. So we got to understand that it is good. So it is good communication. Uh, good communication is good communication builds a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship is built on good communication. It can be between husband and wife. It can be between friends and friends. Whatever. But to keep a healthy relationship or to sustain it or to build it, it needs communication. Not just communication, but good communication. Good communication builds, preserves a healthy relationship. Communication with God. Hallelujah. In Zechariah chapter number 12 verse 1, Zechariah 12 verse 1, the Bible says God Almighty is the one who forms the spirit within man. Please, I'm going somewhere. Follow me. Zechariah 12 verse 1. God Almighty is the one, the architect of man's spirit. He's the one that formed the spirit within man. In Job chapter 32 verse 8, the Bible says, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Or giving him understanding. There is a spirit in man. And by the inspiration. By the inspiration. Of the almighty. Given man understanding. So we see that. I communicate with God. Via my spirit. For God is spirit. So I communicate with God. Via my spirit. Not my flesh. Not my soul. But my spirit. So God is the architect of our spirit. Why? Because he communicates with his children to their spirit. Spirit begat a spirit. Children born not of natural descent, not of the will of man, not for woman, but children born of God. That's why we are spirit being. We are spirit being having a soul living in a cage called the body. Man is a spirit being having a soul and lives in a cage called the body. Hallelujah. So God communicates with us to our spirit. So for us to also communicate with God is through our spirit. For us to worship God is through our spirit. It's in spirit and in truth, not in flesh. In Haggai chapter number 1 verse 14. Haggai chapter 1 verse 14. The Bible says, So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. So we, we see that God communicates with his children, prophets, through their spirit, not their flesh. 
In Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27, Proverbs 20 verse 27, it says, The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So illumination from God to man is through our spirit. Communication from God to man is through our spirit. For God is spirit. The Bible says something very interesting here. You see, uh, Job, uh, John chapter 4, verse 24, what we read from. It says, for God is spirit, and uh, those who must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we, as when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm teaching on communication with God. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our spirit man was renewed. Our spirit man was renewed. Our spirit man was uh, became born again. Born again is by the spirit and of the spirit of God. By the spirit and of the spirit of God. Through faith, washed by the blood. The new man, our new man is in the spirit. In Christ. By the spirit of God. Not in the body, not in the flesh. For yes, we are spirit being with the soul and with the body. But friends, you see, uh, a lot of us, we walk by sight, flesh, what my soul desires. I walk by that. But the Bible said they just shall live by faith. They just, they walk by faith. And faith is spirit. For we have the spirit of faith. So we declare. We have the spirit. So we declare. So we can understand that we carry, once, once we became born again, we carry the DNA of God. The DNA of God is spirit. The DNA of God is embedded in our spirit. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So we are inspired by God through our spirit. Communication with God. I'm going somewhere, please follow me. So we understand that there is no room for flesh. There is no room for the soulish realm. Why oftentimes people don't receive is because we still depend on the arm of flesh. Depend on the soulish realm. God says no. If you must communicate with me, it should be by your spirit. Whatever we receive from God is in the spirit. By the spirit. We don't receive from God in the flesh. Healing is received in the spirit and transferred to the flesh. Hallelujah. Deliverance is done in the spirit, received in the spirit and transformed to the body or transferred to the body. So God speaks to the component of man that understands God is the spirit. The component of man that works with God is the spirit of man. The component of man that is reborn, that is rebirth, that is renewed, is the spirit of man. So, there's a component in man that communicates with God, and that is our spirit. If you don't understand this, you will walk in, you can be a churchgoer, but nothing is happening because you still walk in the flesh. Hallelujah. Communication with God. So, we can see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, it says something important. We walk and live in the spirit. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we ought to walk and live in the spirit. When you, once you receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you have to walk and live in the spirit. Because he speaks to us daily. God always speaks. And God said, and God said, let there be, and there was. Has God speak, spoken to you? Does he speak to you? If no, what is the problem? Do you hear God? If no, this message is for you. You need to come to that place where you can hear God clearly. And that is in the spirit. Not in the flesh. You have to crucify your flesh. Crucify the soul. For the spirit man to dominate. That you may communicate with God effectively. For without effective communication, there is no healthy relationship. Hallelujah. Without effective communication, there is no healthy relationship. Glory be to Jesus. So Galatians 5 verse 25 says, 
If you live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.25 If we live in the spirit, beautiful. Let us walk in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is, communi is communicating with God. Walking in the spirit. When holy men of God moved by the spirit, then prophecy came. You see, so prophecy is not in the soulless realm, it's not in the fleshly realm, it's in the spirit realm. I'm, I'm saying what is from God, not the other ones they are doing outside there. Not that one. I'm not talking about those here, your prophecy. I'm talking about the real one from God. When holy men of God were moved in the spirit, they moved in the spirit, then prophecy came. They understood what is going on and what is the solution. Because holy men of God moved in the spirit. They walk in the spirit. Remember, he said holy men of God. Remember this. Prophecy came when holy men of God, not, not men of God, holy men of God. If there's no holiness attached to that man of God. If there's no holiness attached to that shepherd. That prophecy is not of God. It's of man. Or I don't know where they got it from. However, that's not my emphasis today. I'm teaching on communication with, with God. Hallelujah. We contact God via our spirit. We contact God through our spirit. John 6 verse 66. Or John 6 verse 63. John 6 verse 63 says... The words I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit and life. Jesus says, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Why spirit? Because the word is spirit. So when I want to communicate with God, I move in the spirit. You cannot move in the spirit if you don't live in the spirit. You have to live in the spirit. To move in the spirit. It is not just. It don't just happen like that no. It doesn't just happen like that moving in the spirit no. You have to practice. You have to, con you have to train yourself. And that is why you must stay away from sin. Sin corrupts everything. Hallelujah. Communication with God is very vital this end time. For many don't know what to do. Where to go to. What next step to take? But you, you, you can communicate with God. And God will tell you what to do, how to go about it, when to have effective results. It's just about you communion with God. Communicating with God is vital. It's not through the pastor. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus. Through Jesus, you can communicate with the Father. But remember, Jesus is spirit. Even though he was born in flesh, he's God Almighty. And God is spirit. That's what I said. Children, children born not of man, not of will of man, but of the spirit, but of God. Communication with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to live life is only in the spirit. So God expects us to live in the spirit. So he can communicate with us constantly in the spirit. In Romans chapter 8 verse 9, it says, If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Which suggests to me that there is no communication without the spirit of God in you. You cannot communicate with God if His Spirit is not in you. He said in Romans 8 9 says, If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, why does He dwell in you? Why is the Holy Ghost dwelling in you? For communication with the Father, for strengthening. You cannot communicate with God the Father without the Spirit of God. Not your flesh, not your soul. By my Spirit, say the Lord. So it's not by your mind, not by your articulation, not by your intellect. It's by my spirit. By my spirit, saith the Lord. Therefore, you must live in the spirit. 
For our spirit, again, is a component where God communicates to. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, uh, when you communicate with God in the spirit, it breaks direction, revelation of Jesus. It breaks faith. It brings illumination and also achievement. Friends, a time has come where you need to get to a place where you can speak directly to the Father. A time has come where living in the end time where you need to know when and how to call God. He said, call upon me, I will answer. Call upon me and I will answer. Call upon me and I will answer. For I know the thoughts and plans, I, I know the thoughts, I think towards you. Not of evil, but of good. But how will you know? It is only when you live in the spirit. That you can get what the Spirit of God is saying. And you can move to the direction. And you can achieve and be happy. And be fulfilled in life. Without the Spirit, you cannot achieve anything. Without the Holy Ghost, you can do nothing. So if you don't train your spirit to communicate with God. Child of God, it's a waste of time. Because if you live in the flesh. Flesh is enmity to God. The soul is a flesh and the soul are, in, are enemies to God. So when you live in the flesh, you live in the soul, you cannot receive anything from the Lord. For a person that lives in the flesh is double-minded man. And a double-minded man receives nothing from the Lord. It must be in the spirit. It must be in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, what are some of the pillars to help us have an effective communication with God? All right, Pastor, I want to have an effective communication. What are the pillars? You see, in communication, there is, they, they, have, they have techniques or strategies. That's why you may watch that or example. When you watch TV, you watch a journalist reading news. The way he or she reads the news, number one, is attractive. You want to listen to the person. They have been trained. Number two, the way he or she will read the news, how they put it, they have a strategy. To do what? To call your attention, to catch your attention, to listen to them. Are we together? And you will never see a journalist sitting up there reading the news shabbily. They dress well. They look well. Why? It is part of the packaging. It's part of communication packaging. They dress well. If you dress well in the spirit, you will go far. Hallelujah. It's for another day. Dressing well in the spirit. So a journalist has been trained. Journalists are trained to give our information. To deliver information to inform the public they have a particular way of doing it whether sports or whatever <laughs> whatever they have a way they have been trained likewise children born of god are trained you should be trained but you see we don't want to be trained because some things will go off our lives we are still holding to the old man holding to the old habit which are all in the flesh and flesh amounts to nothing for flesh kills but the spirit Give it life and peace. Hallelujah. So what are some of the pillars to help uh, us have an effective communication with God? What are some of the pillars? Number one pillar is you have to walk away from the old man. If you cannot walk away from the old man, your spirit man cannot be renewed. Or cannot dominate. You have to walk away from your old man. First Peter 3 verse 11. Emphasize on that. First Peter 3 verse 11. You have to walk away from the old man. You have to walk away from sin. The old man is sin. In quote, conclusion, sin is the old man. So when I say walk away from the old man, I mean walk away from sin entirely. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 59, we know the popular scripture verse 1 and 2. For the arm of the Lord, the Lord is not short to deliver you. No, his ears deaf to hear what you are saying and to answer you. 
but your iniquities. But iniquities, your iniquities have separated you from God. So if you don't walk away from sin, you cannot communicate with God effectively. You can't. It's not possible. It's not possible. For God is holy. And God is spirit. And the righteous walk by faith. So a righteous is a person who walks away from sin. Job was a righteous man who feared evil. He shone away from evil. Righteousness exalted the person. Enoch. These were righteous men. Hallelujah. So the first pillar is you must walk away from the old man. You must walk away from sin consciously, constantly. Hallelujah. Because when you walk away from sin, it's not just enough, but you have to walk away from sin and accept the finished work of Calvary. Walking away from sin is good, but unless when you accept the finished work of Calvary and Jesus imputes his righteousness on you, you are not righteous before the Lord. Because our righteousness as a person is filthy before God. But when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we receive Jesus as our, Lord, as our Lord and Savior, He imputes in us His own righteousness. So therefore, God is not seen by me. He sees by Christ in me. The, so we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. So it is not just enough to go away from sin or to walk away from sin. You have to walk away from the old man by coming to the place of accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. By accepting the finished work of Calvary and to live at that perspective. Hallelujah. Secondly, we have to walk away from carnal activities. Secondly, whatever does not please God, walk away from them. I'm teaching on how to be an effective communicator with God. How to build a healthy relationship with God. Because you need it. You need it. We need it. Hallelujah. So you have to walk away from carnal activities. Whatever does not please God, walk away from them. Thirdly, you have to walk towards the truth of God's word. Because his word is him. For you to communicate with God, I take his word back to him. It's through the word. And the word is life. The word is spirit. The word is truth. Hallelujah. We have to walk in the light. Number four, you have to walk in the light of the love of Jesus. The love of God. You have to love people. I didn't say trust people. Don't get me wrong. You have to love people because God loves us. For God to love the world that he gave Christ. So love people but don't trust them. Love people with the agape love. Don't get me wrong please. Don't say pastor say we should love. No please listen to me very well. Let me be very plain. Because sometimes we listen but we get another message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was one message I preached and uh, I said something, somebody thought of something different. Very opposite. Opposite. And God to me, I said, no, I didn't say that. Opposite. Totally opposite. Not even what I was saying. Something else. I'm sure that guy was drunk. Hallelujah. Please get what I'm saying. Love people with the agape love. Love. God said we should love with the agape, not the erotic. Please don't get me wrong. The agape love is love without strings attached. It's the love of God shed abroad in our heart to other people, irrespective of their religion or their nationalities or where they come from. Love them unconditionally. Just love them because God loves you, because you represent God. The agape love, not, not, not the erotic. No, not the erotic kind of love that many think it is love. It is lost. Not that one, not that one. I, I don't mean that one. I mean the agape, God kind of love. That's what I mean. Not the erotic. No place. Not that one. I'm not for that. I'm for the agape. So we have to walk in the life, the light of the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. And also we have to depend totally upon Jesus. Depend totally on him. If you want to communicate with God the Father effectively, Jesus must be the center of it all. And Jesus should be in your heart. Hallelujah. Now, what are some of the benefits of effective communication? Pastor, how will it benefit me? 
Number one benefit is we, we have daily sustenance. We all need daily sustenance, whether safety or provision or protection is sustenance. Sustenance is in diverse form. It can be through what I eat or what I drink. It can be where I sleep. Sustenance can be in diverse form. So our daily sustenance comes as a result of effective communication with God. He told Elijah, go, leave this place, go eastward. I have assigned a woman to feed you there. There was drought in the city. There was drought in the nation, farming all over. But because Elijah was always communicating with God, he was always in tune to the Spirit of God. And God said, Elijah, move from here and go eastward. I have prepared a woman, a woman, a widow, to feed you there. He heard it and he moved. Why? Daily sustenance was achieved because Elijah heard in the Spirit. He walked in the Spirit. He lived in the Spirit. That's why he could communicate with God effectively. He called fire. Why? Because he's a man who lived and moved in the Spirit. You also can walk away from sin and trust God. Hallelujah. So our daily sustainer in Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Matthew 6 11, it says, Give us this day our daily bread. A believer needs daily sustenance, which is from the Lord. Give us, God has provided daily sustenance. And that is only gotten in the spirit. First in the spirit. First in the spirit. God gives daily bread to his children. But you must receive it in the spirit first. Translate it from the spirit to the physical. But you see, a lot of us want to get it in the physical. No, you miss it. It is in the spiritual. Catch it in the spirit. Download it in the spirit. And prove it or manifest it in the physical. Give us this day our daily bread. Daily sustenance. It can be the word of God as well. Bread means the word, literally in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Number two, it maintains our relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, we communicate with God for sustenance, not just what we eat or what we want or what we want to get, but also to maintain that healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. It is when we communicate with Him. It's like a husband and a wife who communicates effectively daily. The love grows. Even normal friendship, not only husband and wife, normal friendship, when you communicate daily, effectively, you know what he likes, what she doesn't like, what he doesn't like, and you communicate and live effect communicate effectively with them, there will never be any problems. Hallelujah. Because effective communication builds healthy relationship. Why some problem things are have going wrong? Because people don't communicate healthily. They might not have the intention to hurt you, but because communication was not proper, you took it the other way around and trouble began. I didn't mean this way. I didn't say it that way. Communication. Because communication was not, was not properly done, it gave birth to problems. Likewise, if we communicate with God effectively, it gives us what daily sustenance. Number two, it maintains our relationship with God. Because child of God, if your relationship with God cuts off, that's all. Please, make sure you sustain it daily. Not daily, per minute. Not per minute. In fact, make sure per second you are in touch with God Almighty. You are intact. You are hooked up in the Spirit and by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thirdly, when daily sustenance also, it can mean strength. When we are uh, benefits of effective communication is we are strengthened daily. Strengthened. Strengthened. When I communicate with God, He strengthens me because sometimes we falter. Sometimes we become weak and weary because of challenges. Elijah who called on fire. The man of God, who called, the prophet who called on fire. Call literal fire. At the point in time, he was, he was like, oh God, take me away. Why? Because he was running away from Jezebel. Why couldn't he call the same fire against Jezebel? But sometimes, you, we cannot say Elijah was weak, no. We have the human nature that can pop up. We have the 
ox nature, we have the eagle nature, and we have the lionic nature. So man has four faces. The ox face, we have, first of all, the lionic face, it can be a lion, eagle, ox, and also man. So at that point, that when Elijah was running from Jezebel, he, he was a natural man that was in action. But God wanted the lionic man, which is a spirit man, to come alive and to dominate. Hallelujah. Sometimes we face challenges that makes people weak and weary. So when you communicate with God effectively and constantly, He strengthens you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So we wait upon the Lord for our strength to be renewed. Why? Because challenges, sometimes they, they beat people back wide. But when you are hooked up with God, in the end, you become a victor, not a victim. You overcome the circumstance situation. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. But there should be an effective way of communicating with God for you to be sustained, strength-wise, to face the battles in life. The fourth aspect is, uh, one of the benefits is Jesus is revealed to us clearly. The more we communicate with God in the spirit, the more Jesus is revealed to us. And the more Jesus is revealed to you, the more your faith builds up. And the more you walk in the miraculous, the supernatural. Because you now understand who you serve. Who you serve. By the grace of God again, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. By the grace of God, I give him glory. He has appeared to me two times, twice. Jesus Christ is real. He has appeared to me twice. That's why the world can gather. The world can gather. But it cannot move me because I have seen him. Jesus is real. The world can gather and say whatever they want. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And he's coming back soon. He is the only king of kings. He is the only lord of lords. He is the righteous one. He is the only living God. All other gods are mommy gods. What are we talking about? I have seen him by the grace of God. Jesus is real. So this has built my faith. Not just by the word. Yes, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Yes, but what strengthened me is he appeared to me twice. So the more I communicate in the spirit with the father, the more Christ is revealed to me. And the more I manifest in the miraculous, the supernatural. Not by might, not by power. But by my spirit. So you must live and walk in the spirit. For the spirit of God to walk to you. Hallelujah. So Jesus is revealed to us. Hallelujah. Also, we, also the fifth aspect, one of the uh, benefits is there is divine direction. When you communicate with God effectively in the spirit, you communicate with God, it gives direction. He gives direction. He told Elijah, move from here and go eastward. I prepared a widow to feed you. So he heard for direction because there was a situation at hand. There was famine. Are you going through farming, spiritual farming, fiscal farming, financial farming, marital farming, business farming? I have a word for you. If you can hook up to God, you have direction and a way out. For God is the way maker. But the way maker cannot manifest if you are not connected to him. And that is through effective communication. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So there was divine direction for Elijah. That's why he could be fed during the time of farming. What are the challenges you are facing? The solution is there. But God needs to open your eyes. And that is when you get in the spirit. Child of God, the solution to our problems are all around us. Unless when your eyes are open spiritually, then you can see it. The solution is not far. It's just around you. It can even be within you, but the Holy Ghost must open your eyes. It's what I mean by you must live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. So there's divine direction when you communicate with God. Elijah, Elijah was directed. Elisha, Moses, Moses, whatever Moses did, he was led in the Spirit and he lived in the Spirit. And that's why he manifested in the physical because the supernatural was intact. Moses was in the spirit all the time. Elijah, Elisha, Gideon. Hallelujah. You also can also be, if you choose to. Glory be to God. Divine direction. And friends, 
Nowadays, this end time, we all need direction. I want to start a business. I want to start a business. You need divine direction. You need God to direct you what kind of business. Where? What you do? You need direction. The counsel of men are good, but I discover the counsel of men fails. The best way is to communicate with God and ask Him, what are you saying? What should I do? Hallelujah. Many are the plans of men, but the purpose or the counsel of God prevails. Go back to God and speak to Him. You want to get married to a brother? Lord, direct me. You need direction. Is this your will? Is, is it going to be okay for me? God knows. You want to get married to a sister? You need direction from God. You want to travel overseas? You need direction from God. Hallelujah. You want to go and rent a house? You need direction from God. You want to go and apply for a job? You need direction. In effect, we need direction every second from God. As per all. Where is your daily bread? You need direction to your daily bread. You need direction to your daily bread. Direction to revelation. Direction for the realm of world. You need direction. And that is only in the spiritual realm. Not in the physical. Hallelujah. There's also divine preservation. When you live in the spirit and walk in the spirit, you communicate with God, you are preserved. There's preservation. Elijah was preserved. There's preservation. Daniel was preserved. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were preserved. Esther was preserved. Mordecai was preserved. Why? Why were they preserved? Because these are people who are covenanted with God. It's not just being a covenant partner with God. You have to live and move in the spirit. Communication with God. Hallelujah. The next one is, he shepherds us to greener pastures. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or I shall not be in want. It's still correct. Why does he shepherd you? To where? The shepherd shepherds the flock to greener pastures. So, when I communicate with God effectively, daily, constantly, he leads me to greener pastures. He leads me to my place of assignment. He leads me to my nation of assignment. He leads me to his purpose, his will, his counsel. He shepherds me to greener pastures. He shepherds me to my place of assignment. He shepherds, he leads, he shepherds, he directs, he shepherds. That is true. Communicating with God. And it is in the spirit, not the flesh. Not the flesh. Hallelujah. Child of God, above all, we have to understand that our communication with God is effective, beautiful. But we have to understand that a good, a good communication births a healthy relationship. Proton. Likewise, when you communicate with God in the spirit effectively, it builds a, it builds a healthy relationship. What am I talking about? Healthy relationship with God is important, especially when it comes to the issue of eternity. So eternity should be the main goal of a believer. Yes, you are living on earth. Don't get me wrong. You should be successful on earth. You should be prosperous on earth. But if your prosperity comes before God, there's a problem there. God should be first. Eternity should be first. There is nothing wrong for a child of God to be prosperous. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. 3 John 2 verse 2. I wish above all things that you may prosper. You see, God wants us to prosper. But our prosperity should not take his place. God should be first. God should be first. Should be placed at all times, highly extant. Hallelujah. Not the blessings. But Jesus Christ should be first. So when you communicate with God effectively, Jesus is revealed to us daily. And our relationship with him is built up. And Jesus came that we may have life and have life abundantly. Life where? Life here on earth and especially eternal life. Eternal life. Life on earth and also eternal life. Hallelujah. So 
The Bible says people like Enoch, they walk with God. Why? Because they live in the spirit and walk in the spirit. They were always communicating with God. So Jesus Christ is there, the Holy Ghost is there to help us to fellowship and to communion with God. To communicate with God is by the person of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost cannot be present if Jesus is absent. When you see Jesus, the Holy Ghost will be there. Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Jesus. Read, read Romans chapter 8. If the Spirit of God is not there, Jesus is not there. If Jesus is not there, the Spirit of God is not there. Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God also. And Jesus and God the Father, they are one. John, 3 verse, John 10 verse 30. I and my Father, we are one. So Jesus is God Almighty. So where Jesus is, his spirit will be. That's the Holy Ghost. So we have to keep, we have to maintain that relationship. Fellowship with the Holy Ghost. And that is in the spirit. So effective communication with the, with the person of God or through the Holy Spirit breaks faith and breaks a healthy relationship. And a healthy relationship will keep us at the place where we have to walk with him daily. For Jesus wants or longs to walk with us daily. If anyone must come after me, means he expects us to come after him daily. He should deny himself and follow me. Deny himself means what? Deny the old man daily. Reject the old man daily. Reject the sinful man daily. And carry your cross means when you reject the old man daily, you come to the place of the cross and repent and ahead you are moving. So repentance should be the order of the day. Hallelujah. Communicating with God is vital this end time. Without effective communication with God, many will be deceived. Please, I want to urge us to go back to the place of communicating with God. And that is in the place called the sacred place. Go back to the sacred place, tarry in the sacred place, wait on God, call upon his name, call upon God, and he will answer you. Hallelujah. Till then, child of God, Jesus wants to communicate with you. The Holy Ghost wants to communicate with you. But you see, friends, there cannot be effective communication with God in the flesh. You must live in the spirit. How do I live in the spirit? It's through Jesus Christ and by the person of the Holy Ghost. How do I live in Christ? It's when you surrender to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to come to the feet of the cross and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Repent of your sin. Forsake them. Then when you receive Jesus, the Holy Ghost helps you. He dwells in you. Greater is he that is in me. He lives in you and moves in you. He's the one that helps you to live and move in the Spirit. Not by your power. Are you ready to live in the Spirit? Are you ready to, come to live in the Spirit and communicate with God? For God is spirit. It is through the cross and the person of Jesus Christ. If you can pray this prayer with me, it will help you to get to the place where you can communicate with God in the spirit. Hallelujah. Like I said, there must be the place of repentance. Just pray after me. Lord Jesus. Say Lord Jesus. If you are watching this video from the Americas, from Canada, from South America, from Europe, from Africa, Asia, Middle East, Russia, Australia, New Zealand, whatever you are watching this video from, you can receive Jesus Christ today as a Lord and Savior. Doesn't matter your, 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 your nationality. It's about relationship. If you want to have a relationship with Jesus, to communicate with the Father, it is now. The grace is available. Hallelujah. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I forsake my sins. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, wash me with the blood. Come into my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, today I declare, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. Come into my heart, be my master, be my Lord. I receive you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, child of God, or ladies and gentlemen, friends, if you pray this prayer, then I want to advise you the person of the Holy Ghost will help you in this walk to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. If we, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. For God is Spirit. And communication with God is in the Spirit and by the Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Not the flesh. God is spirit. Till then, Jesus is coming back soon. He loves you. Shalom.